Fuck them horns, ladies and gentlemen. I'm recording this video as the Red River Rivalry, Red River Showdown, Red River, whatever you like to call it. Uh, all I know is the horns going to be wearing that golden cowboy hat. Ladies and gentlemen, what we just saw was a beautiful, beautiful uh, display of revenge. Uh, Texas gets to go ahead and take care of business against Oklahoma. But again, it's not all rainbows and pixies for this Texas team. There's a lot of question marks for this Oklahoma team. Y'all got a long season ahead of y'all. Y'all need to get healthy uh, quickly. And putting the rivalry aside, I think this is a defense who's probably going to be one of the best in the nation. Just the way that they, they're used, the way that they uh, uh, are the tenacity towards the football. So bright spots for both of these teams and some negative spots for both of these teams. So we're going to review it, talk about it. I'm already predicted how this is going to go. I told you how it was going to go. So we're going to go read those comments. Tell me and see if y'all disagree with those situations, the things that I said. And then from there, um, I guess we'll just wrap up a few things, talk about some memes, some storylines, and then look at the outlook for both of these teams. First things first, I appreciate y'all watching these videos. I hope you like the video so leave a like on the video if you dislike it dislike it um subscribe if you enjoy college football content and let's get right into it two minutes left in the fourth quarter right now which if you just look at the scoreboard would look like a complete domination and complete throttling um, from texas uh, to oklahoma and it was uh and, and it felt really good every single second of it but as a texas fan i think there was a lot of meat that we left on the bone there was a lot of things that happened with quinn yours in his very very slow start that i told y'all in that other game that was going to happen so we'll get into that we're going to also going to like i said get into um oklahoma so let's go straight to the box score i want to talk about the the ewers in the room um Here's one thing. I think a lot of people were confused or sorry. Some people were confused who aren't Texas fans of why Arch isn't playing. Why is he not starting? He's been on a tear X, Y, Z. Look, Quinn yours was a Heisman candidate coming into this season, right? He has, he's very injury prone. This is something that we've seen before. This is something I think we saw. Was it last year, two years ago where he got injured first game he came back was Oklahoma. And then he completely takes his steam and pile of everywhere. Okay. Um, I don't know if he just gets jittery. I, I talked about this, uh, in the Michigan game and go back and watch my, my video when I when I predicted this Texas Oklahoma game Quinn yours has this issue where the first few, he has to like get it out of him right he's got to he's got to complete a pass do something good he's got to get the flow into the game and that's fine it's just some players do it differently you'll see some linebackers or a running back say hey I just need to get a really hard hit once I get hit hard okay boom we're in the game for me back in my uh high school days again I was an illustrious player I was almost maybe kind of they didn't want me at d3 but I, I just call myself a wannabe d3 player um uh, so I, I don't have the the biggest amount of experience but just from my small anecdotal experience I will let you know for me hey I get a nice tackle for loss boom all right now I'm feeling it now I'm flowing now now things are nice things are making sense and everything just kind of feels there with Quinn he needs to do that but he needs to find a way to do it faster because coming out and just missing wide open targets coming out and having awful overthrows for interceptions and really keeping Oklahoma in the game uh when they didn't really need to be because from top to bottom I mean uh, this Texas team is just it, it out talents them it out depths Oklahoma the score should have been a lot more uh a lot bigger of a spread just look Oklahoma is on their backup true freshman quarterback and they're missing all of their first five starting receivers. I'm not here to dance on Oklahoma's grave and talk about, oh, we came in as the horns and we handle business, okay? First off, uh, y'all can take that boomer soonish out of Dallas. Y'all can go back across the Red River and go enjoy your mediocrity in the SEC. We told y'all what it was. But to be a real football fan, what I will tell you awful red and cream motherfuckers is that um, – Y'all have a long, long, long season ahead. Uh, again, missing five wide receivers. Y'all don't know what your identity is at quarterback. That Haskins kid, who's clearly going to be a great player, um, y'all can't just have him run around with, like a chicken with his head cut off. He doesn't know uh, um, decisions to be made in a high-tier game. I predicted coming in this game, hey, we're going to see some Jackson Arnold. It might not be in, in a, uh, you know, just a, hey, just go in there and do it and, and take out Michael Haskins. I thought it was going to be in a, hey, all right, we get in the red zone. Let's put a, let's put a package in there for him. He was the leading, uh, 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 what's it called? Number 11. Uh, I can't believe I forgot his name. I just said his name. You know who I'm talking about. He was the leading receiver. Uh, not receiver. He was the leading rusher of this team. So that, that quarterback was the leading rusher of the team as well as, of course, the leading uh, for, for throwing yards. So he was a... Uh, a typically pretty effective player so I don't understand why from a venerable standpoint and I know that maybe he doesn't call the offensive play calls I'm not I'm not into what all y'all Oregon not Oregon Oklahoma whatever y'all is it don't matter uh you got two losses in the SEC ha 
Welcome to it, son. Um, whatever y'all got cooking over there, you need it. You probably should have got Jackson Arnold as his name. Got him a lot more involved. I think giving this Texas defense a lot more looks that way, keeping them on their toes would have been a lot better. The issue is, the issue is, this was is the third week for the Haskins. This is a rookie guy, a freshman, true freshman quarterback, which this elite uh, Texas defense got to see three weeks of film on, and he just didn't have any angles, especially with no help. He had nobody to throw to. He, like the running game was consistent; it was good. So that was good from Oklahoma. So y'all should, as you, the Oklahoma fans, y'all should hang your hat on that. And, and what y'all should really hang your hat on is that defense. Oh my God, uh, I I really do think this Oklahoma defense is gonna end up in the top five in defensive stating. Come coming into this game, to look at the defense, I mean. You see top 12 in opponents' points per game, top 25 in yards a game, top 10 in opponents' points per game, top 20 in opponents' yards a game, third down conversion, top 17. Like, this this is a defense by all standards that is just elite across the board, and you saw that they were elite even when it, it felt like – there's there's a point in a game where once these offenses start converting third downs and third downs and pounding it and pounding it, there's a part where the, the defense starts to bend a little bit. It, it only felt like that – Coming into the second quarter, the second quarter is like it just started it, when it rained, it started pouring. But after that, they were playing good defense. I mean, you can see the box score. We scored, we went off crazy in, in, in the second quarter, and that came with a, a fumbled ball into the end zone. It came with back to back, uh, what's it called, uh, a fumble recoveries. It came with missing field goals, a lot of sloppiness, and a lot of chances given to this Texas team to even be like it is. And that's why I say it should have been a lot. The score should have been a lot wider. But at the end of the day, the way that they were playing, to go back to my Texas team, hey, bye, bye Sooners. Y'all know what y'all did. Y'all lost. Bye. See y'all next Red River. Uh, uh, give me the golden hat, son. Um, but to talk about more specifically um, about the Texas team and the, and, the, and the things that I didn't like, first off, I think the, the, biggest, the biggest issue is that my main man, uh, Isaiah Bond, um, he had to come out the game. I think it was in the second quarter. So we don't like to see that leading receiver, explosive, fastest person on, on that. No, sorry. Wingo's the fastest player. And he, I'm happy about that. It's not a complete negative spot. To give one more positive thing, I really like what Wingo did. I really like what uh, my man Golden did. Uh, obviously, him is is starting to be Quinn Ewer's uh, go-to guy. Um, so I like to see that uh, quarterback tight end connection there. Um, I feel like that's a good safety valve uh, that he likes to go to. So it's good to see there. But losing, um, and we don't know how for how long. I don't have any updates as of now. He only had one more session for five yards, but I feel like he is just such a wild card to have in your back pocket when you have to go against a Georgia team that if we are without him, uh, I think it's going to be a, a tough sledding going against them dogs. So um, just be on the lookout for that. And then, like I said, we talked about Quinn Ewers and him just lights being too bright. Now, after that, he started he started playing a little cleaner, but it, it wasn't up to par, right? He started making some good throws, but I feel like we really should have turned it up in the next level. Shout out to these running backs. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God, they were um, completely creaming this uh, Oklahoma offense. If there was any reason why this Oklahoma Oklahoma offense started bending a little bit, is because of this run game, man. It just uh, – my man Blue went crazy. My man Wisner went crazy. I think both of them came in with good, big plays. J- Jaden Blue only had 30 yards on 10 carries. That doesn't seem right. I swear I saw him carry the ball a bunch of times. I mean, obviously, he carried they carried it an equal amount of times. He did some dirty work, and I guess uh, uh, Mr. Wisner just opened up with some of the bigger runs. I just I felt like he was more impactful. J- don't look at the box score with his 30 yards for 10. I'm telling you, the way that he was impactful was good because he was just grinding yards, grinding yards, those three-yard, four-yard, five-yard, those runs that you need. Uh, um, he got those. So uh, uh, shout-out to Blue. I think he's one of my favorite backs that we have in the backfield, even though my man Wisner went for an amazing uh, day. Love to see that. Um, other than that, Quinn's got to be better. Um, uh, I think this offense needs to be a little more explosive um, and, and more consistently explosive. I think Quinn just misses the mark on some things, and that's what makes it upset because I know Sark's drawing great plays. I know Sark's got the boys going and cooking in a certain way, so I just want to make sure that Quinn can keep, keep his head uh, uh, even keel. But look, he's coming back from an injury. This was a rivalry game I, talk, I talked about in that other video. Hey, you don't know. Nothing means anything. Rankings, teams, when it's the Red River rivalry, you can go look at the history, and we did in that in that video – Last year, we lost to this team, and we made it to the playoffs. It was our only regular season game. It's it's the last regular season game we've la- lost in the last two years. So rivalry games is another level, another beast, another element. So I was expecting something different, but I was not expecting Quinn. I, I expected him to struggle early. I was not expecting us to look a little pedestrian when it comes to the offense, except for some bright spots. I just... 
I can't be confident going against this great Georgia defense that we're going to have to face. Now, that offense is pretty lethargic, just like Oklahoma's is. Um, and it was one of those things that I thought in the beginning of the year, Georgia's offense is just needs to get in gear. But we're six games into the season, and it's a lethargic offense. Um, so I think we need to bank on that. Our defense is playing great, so I don't think that's going to be an issue there. And again, like I said, for the Sooners, just clean some things up. Y'all probably make a bowl game still. Elite defense is going to be able to take y'all to a lot of good places and spaces. So looking at some of these stat rankings coming into it, because I like adding a little context to it. Uh, remember, this offense is number four in points a game, number five in yards a game, the Texas offense, number seven in points of play, number nine in yards of play, third down conversions, which I tell y'all every single one of these prediction videos, recap videos is probably the biggest determiner of how how the motivation, how the, the will, how the flow of a game is going to go. If an offense can continue to convert third on third downs, which we saw this Texas offense do for as much slack as I gave it to them, and maybe they came up empty handed, converting on back to back to back third downs just puts the defense in a mindset where it's it's hard to defend. It's hard to feel like you've done anything. Third downs, defenses should feel happy, right? The, the, the edge player should be able to pin their ears back. Oh, yeah, even our cornerback should be able to play soft. I should be able to hug these sticks, and that's what we're going to go do. But if every time that happens, they keep converting, it doesn't feel like that. A third down just starts feeling like second down. You don't get that boost. You don't get that feel, and then it results into you not getting off the field, getting even more tired, and getting bashed around like this Oklahoma defense did. Again, a great defense, but if you're letting teams convert third downs, there's nothing you can do. You're tying yourself out. You're willing yourself out. And you're taking the momentum out of the game. But hold up, wait. This defense, which showed up amazing, uh, was number two in opponent's points a game, opponent's yards game number three, number one in opponent's points per play, number two in opponent's yards a game, top 10 in th opponent's third down conversions, number 41 in fourth down conversions, and number four in red zone scoring. Um, I, I'm not going to get into any more of the particular specifics. We do that as, on, on our prediction, but just wanted to add some context there. Let's get into these comments of my other video in which I predicted uh, this exact thing kind of happening. See how y'all boys felt. See if there's any disagreements. Other than that, man, we're going to look at some memes and things. Maybe take a look at a golden cowboy hat if it's if it's floating around the internet. If I can see old Quinny in it, I, I might I might take a peek at it. All right, as a Bama fan, this game always gives me Iron Bowl and Jordan hair vibes, and I love it and hate it at the same time it's an amazing tradition son is it a what is a trip was a try on tradition it is an amazing tradition it, it is amazing michael hawkins has star potential they need to let that young man cook i agree but he needs to learn more um, I really like uh, Hawkins. Um, he reminds me, and, and be very. Uh, let me finish. Let me land when I say this. All right, I already feel it. I already feel it. He reminds me of Bryce Young. Stop! 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 Right there. Not in the throwing ability. Not in the actual physical traits. Specifically, when it comes to his stature and when he's in the pocket, how how he can slip away from defenders. Just that. Just that. Don't. <laughs> not the elite. Uh, a pocket present, not the elite uh, ball placement, not all the other things that we knew. Uh, uh, what's it called? That the, the big bad dog was, especially in Alabama. I know you kids don't, y'all don't see him like that. But Bryce Young um, at Alabama was cerebral, was amazing, and specifically in the pocket. Um, go back, go watch the Georgia. I'm um, not Georgia. Go watch the Texas uh, Alabama game from 2022. You you can see exactly. You know play, you know what play I'm talking about, dog. You know exactly what the play I'm talking about. Um, but I think he's gonna have a bright future. No, it's a rivalry. It's college football. I would not be surprised. I thought you were. You were to go in there and just absolutely humiliate Texas. Well, I'm, I'm a Texas fan, son. I'm a Sooner fan. <laughs> I have to admit this was a good, a good video. Hey, man. Hey, man. Say, man. Appreciate the, the support. No, he's not having a great Saturday. Um, horns dying. Uh, well, horns up all day. Uh, are, you, are you sure about that? <laughs> are you sure? Are you sure about that? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oklahoma has nothing to lose. Texas has everything to lose. I, I, I would disagree. If 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 Oklahoma wins this game, aren't they undefeated in SEC? Prove me if I'm wrong. Okay, no. So they're two and one in the SEC, but still, uh, they're Texas is the only undefeated team in the SEC. They would be uh, a one loss team in the SEC. 
they have a lot to play for. So I think that's why there's so many replies under this. Y'all forget this is the same as 2022. Queen got hurts versus Bama comes back for Red River shootout. And what happens? 49-0. So if you forget, oh, you didn't have a quarterback the year. We ran Wildcat all game. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to be the same exact thing, even though we did, in fact, dominate. So uh, I'm not I'm not too mad at him pursuing that. But, uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. We we went into some deep – we went into the deep history of this rivalry. Y'all go watch this this video. It's a, good, it's a good video, man. It's a good video. But that's it, man. I just wanted to recap this game. I'm happy about some things. Happy that we got to beat them Sooners after last year's embarrassment and the year before that embarrassment. Um, but it is what it is. We're on to the next one. We have uh, – some big dogs that are coming into the to the yard next week. So we got to handle business there as a Texas fan, Oklahoma. I think y'all still have a bright uh, future, sadly. Um, but when it comes to Texas, we just got to be a lot more elite when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. That defense is one of the best in the nation. It's going to continue to be. Um, and then we need to get that SEC championship. I don't even care about winning a national championship. There's two things. I live in Georgia, by the way. I have Georgia football fans as my friends, and they are obnoxious. Um, if I can just win the SEC championship and beat Texas A&M, dog, <laughs> I'll be happier than a cucumber on an ice storm, all right? But y'all be phenomenal. Y'all be amazing. I appreciate y'all watching these videos. Leave a like if you like it. It's like you do a lot. All that stuff. Subscribe, bell icons, or you know the things that YouTubers say. You'd be phenomenal.